This video has been made possible by Rebus Farm, the professional render service. Hey guys and welcome back. Well, today we're going to look at effects in Maya. And this one is a request that I got from a Hangout group member. Uh, that's my Facebook group. If you want to become a member, uh, I'll put a link uh, below. And uh, that said, the question that she asked me is, can you do a tutorial on how to smash glass in Maya? So that's what we're going to do. We're going to take a chrome ball and we're going to smash a bottle. Okay, let's uh, check it out. Here we go. Okay guys, well, how to smash a bottle. All right, well, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up an existing scene where I modeled a wine bottle because that's not what this tutorial is about. And that said, you don't necessarily have to use a wine bottle. Uh, you can use any object you like, uh, but I thought the effect was kind of cool with the, the wine bottle. So uh, that's what we're gonna do, okay? Uh, let's see where is it to where is it where is it come on come on come on come on come on oh, there it is okay all right so <clears throat> this scene is a backdrop a wine bottle and a few lights that's basically it i'm just going to tweak this a little bit it's a scene that i did a long time ago uh, i'm gonna get rid of that hdri image in the back i'm gonna hit R and skill this guy in like so I got a number of lights going on here don't worry about this too much I'm just gonna tweak this a little I don't want any shadows on these three lights so I'm gonna go to uh, let's see two shadows yeah I'm gonna go to use ray trace turn that off turn that off and turn that off and there we go and then on my bottle itself, I'm going to apply a new material. So I'm going to assign new material. I'm going to use a mental ray material. So MIA material X. And then I'm going to jump into my presets in the attribute editor under my material presets, glass solid and replace. And then I'm going to go down here and I'm going to change that color to green and push that to dark green like so. All right, so that's all there's to it for our bottle. Now, um, I'm happy with the lighting. One thing I wanna do though is add a different uh, HDRI image. So I'm gonna go into my render settings. I'm gonna go to scene, uh, create image-based lighting, and I'll actually set up, quickly set up the render for uh, when we're done. HD 1080 is fine. Quality 1515 is fine. Okay, we'll leave the rest at default. So I'm going to load up my HDRI image here by simply going to my folder where I have my HDRI images. And I'm going to use this one. I kind of like that one. It's uh, arches and it uh, looks cool. So we'll use that and I need to apply a material to my ground plane. So assign new material. Let's do another MIA and open up our attribute editor again. We'll go to our presets. Let's find something suitable. Let's see, satin metal and replace. Okay, cool. So we're all set. Now, what do we need to do to um, cut up our bottle? Okay. First, I'm gonna make sure that I don't cut up anything else. So I'm just gonna select all of this stuff and hit Control H to hide it. I'm gonna select my lights as well. Hit Control H there again. And then I'm gonna select my bottle. I'm gonna open my modeling toolkit and go to the multi-cut tool. Okay, let's minimize that. And I'm gonna left click, hold and drag. And as I do that, I'm gonna just pull a number of cuts through my bottle. Now, because this is an old scene, I just want to make sure that I don't have any preview smooth going on here. So I'm going to hit Q on my keyboard, right click object mode and hit one. Yeah, you can see that it actually does. So I'm going to go to mesh and smooth to actually smooth my model. And that looks quite high, uh, 
high poly, so we'll leave it at that. So that's all cut up. And then I'm going to right click at a vertex, drag like all of my vertices and go to mesh and actually not mesh, edit mesh and detach. So this will detach all the vertices that um, share a common space. And as a result, I can now go in, right click face, take any of these faces. And if I hit W, I can pull that out. Okay. That's kind of what we want. So that's good. Uh, I can now turn on everything that I turned off. So I'm going to mesh and display. Uh, where do you go? Sorry, display and show all. And there you have it. And we're going to do is we're going to right click, go to object mode, select our bottle and under FX, we're going to go to end cloth and create end cloth. Now, if we simply select this guy and hit play, it will fall straight through our floor and it won't do anything. Okay. It's a uh, kind of high poly, so it's slow and I'm recording this video in high uh, definition. So that adds to that as well. But you can see the bottle is just dropping straight through the floor. Okay. I'm going to hit escape. I'm going to hit stop here and jump back to frame one. So what we need to do is tell the system that it should take into account our floor. Okay. Make sure you're on frame one. Come on. Oh, it's trying to run. Sorry. Just stop that. Frame one. There you go. Okay, we're going to take our floor and we're going to go under end cloth to create passive collider. So now if we hit play, what we'll see is that the bottle will collapse uh, on top of itself. And again, it's not going very fast because of all that's going on. But you can see that it's no longer going through the floor and the individual uh, pieces of glass are starting to come out of the side while the bottle collapses. And this is also a very good method if you want to simulate, for example, a, a building that is exploding, collapsing and so forth. It's going straight down, but if you add fields like uh, turbulence and so forth, you can uh, influence that as well. Okay. So I'm just going to stop that and jump back to frame one. And obviously we don't want the bottle to collapse on top of itself. So we're going to open up the attribute editor. We're going to find our uh, nucleus and in our nucleus, we have a gravity setting gravity 9.8. We're going to set that to zero. So there's no gravity pulling the bottle down anymore. Now it's time to create our object that's going to smash the bottle. So I'm going to go into my modeling menu. We're going to take a polygon sphere. Let's uh, pull that up and push that back a little bit. And let's, uh, let's see, we'll hit control A to pull up the attribute editor and we'll set the subdivision level slightly higher. So it looks a bit better. Okay. Alrighty, so let's uh, position this thing. So if it came in from here, it would go straight to the bottle. So that's uh, good. We're going to look at the height. I kind of want it to impact somewhere around here, which would be good. And we don't want it to be too far off. So we'll do something like so. And obviously if we don't add any, um, fields to our ball, it's going to go straight through the ball and nothing will happen with the ball. So we need to tell the system that this ball should impact with our bottle. Okay. So with the ball selected, we're going to go to uh, our FX menu and we're going to go to end cloth. So where is it right there? And we're going to create a passive collider as we do that. And we hit four. Let's see, just want to make sure that that worked. Yeah, it did. You can see that by that little thingy in the middle there. Okay. So now it's time to animate it. So I'm going to select the ball and I'm in frame one. So I'm going to hit S to keyframe it. And I want the ball to go straight through. So I'm going to scrub my animation to let's say 50, 45, 49, I think. Yeah, that's fine. And I'm going to push this straight through to about there. 
and then we're going to hit S on our keyboard to keyframe that again. We're going to jump back to frame one. I'm going to go, I don't know if I did a bookmark, apparently not. So we'll just uh, get a nice angle here. And we'll bookmark this, view, bookmark, edit, bookmark, and we'll call this new. Apply and close. And now let's simply hit play and see what happens. Okay, and again, this will not go very fast, so give it some time to uh, calculate. It's a good thing I didn't do uh, 200 frames, otherwise we would be waiting a long time. Now it all depends on what you want to do. Do you want to uh, do a full animation where the ball goes straight through the bottle? Do you want to do a still render where the ball has just impacted the bottle? It kind of all depends on what you want, okay? So I'll just uh, have this run through and we'll give that a few more seconds. It's almost there, as you can see. Now we're getting to the exciting bit. And now you can see that the bottle is starting to fracture. And you're, gonna, you're seeing that sections of glass are starting to fly around. And here we do have one little issue. And I'll tell, tell you what that is once it's done. Okay, let's stop there. All right. Now, <clears throat> initially when I did this, I did a still render, uh, as that's something that I typically do. Uh, but I do realize if you have the ball go straight through your bottle, remember that we removed the gravity from the bottle so it wouldn't collapse uh, on itself. Um, that's a bit of an issue, as you can see here, because once the bottle is about halfway, you want that top little section to start falling down as well, and possibly even the bottom of the bottle. Now, what you could do there to fix that is if you go back to frame one, once you're at that point, and I'll, I can't simulate it right now, once you're at that point, you go into the attribute editor uh, by hitting Control A, um, and that would be on the bottle, okay? You would go to the nucleus right there, and here you have that gravity that you uh, set to zero, okay? Now, let's say the ball goes crashing through the bottle at frame 35 or so. At that point, you want the rest of the bottle to collapse, right? So you drag your slider to, let's say, that specific point, let's say 35, and then you go in and set this to 9.8. Hang on. 9.8, right click and set key. Okay, so if I did this correctly, and we'll uh, we'll see. Mm, sorry that we have to do this again. Shouldn't take too long, hopefully. I know for a fact that once you uh, start recording in high definition while you're doing simulations, that that is a tremendous impact on the system. Okay. And to be quite honest, I didn't try this, so I'm not quite sure whether this will work or not, but we'll see. It's always fun to uh, kind of play around with that. And if you want the bottom part of the bottle to have bigger pieces of glass, then that is something that you can do. Uh, by uh, um, using the multi-cut tool in that way. So let's see, we're close, we're getting close to frame 35, I think we did. So let's see if we actually see something happen.
so far it doesn't really look like it. Um, I'll just have it run out, see what happens. Now the way that top section of the bottle is suspended in midair, that is uh, unnatural, of course, unless you would have something with an extremely high velocity, okay? So two ways you can fix this. One is to aim the ball slightly higher, so it will destroy that top part of the bottle as well. Uh, or two is to uh, freeze frame at the point where the ball actually hits the bottle, okay? And that was my original intention anyway, so let's just uh, do that. And then we'll uh, call it a day and we'll render this guy out because that's what I set out to do to begin with. But hopefully this little experiment here teaches you something as well. And uh, if you come up with a solution uh, on how to fix that problem and to have the uh, bottle collapse entirely uh, at point in time that you want it to, uh, let me know in the comments. I would love to figure out how that would work. Okay. So again, almost there. A few more frames. Now I'm going to get ready to stop this because I kind of find it uh, cooler to kind of freeze frame on that whole whole thing. Okay. Stop, 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 stop. Why is it not stopping? There you go. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so that's what we're going to do. That looks pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to take the ball here because I want to add a material to it. Assign the material. I'm going to go with the same MIA. I'll do a preset and I'll do Chrome and replace. And then we're going to go to our bookmark. Lots of emails. Uh, bookmark, new bookmark. There we go. And we are going to render this guy out. And I'll see you when it's done. Here we go. All right, guys. Well, there you have it. This is our uh, end result, our render. Uh, before you guys go, uh, just a, uh, a remark that I want to make. Uh, I uh, launched a group on LinkedIn called B2A, which stands for Business to Artists. And it's a platform to bring uh, companies and content creators together. So if you are a freelance artist and you are looking for financial support, uh, software, hardware, and so forth, please join, uh, hang out with other artists and uh, get in contact with companies that are looking for uh, product placements and so forth, okay? Uh, vice versa, if you are a company owner and you are looking to get your uh, content um, out there, um, this is a great place to uh, get connected with influencers, okay? So I'll put the link uh, below. And uh, that said, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time. Bye.